In this video, I'd like to show you how to create your own versatile puzzle to teach mathematical vocabulary to a wide range of learners using just the numbers one to nine. But first, we need to talk about AI. You see, I've been jumping on this chat GPT thing to ask random questions, and I've been quite impressed with some of the answers I've gotten. So, you know, like create a vertical leap program for a washed up white guy who wants to dunk it, uh, for a friend, for a friend. Um, and, you know, create an essay summarizing Macbeth. And then if you're really clever, some of the students might go in the, in the voice of a year eight student or um, in the tone of a year eight student, making four or five spelling mistakes. Because if you're cheating well, you don't want to make it perfect. And so I've been thinking about the implications for the maths classroom. And so I'm going to run you through some of the things I've been asking this chatbot and the responses I've gotten. And then also show you why creating tasks like this is so important for the future and now. So I'm just going to pop a worded question in for the AI to answer. It's just a basic trigonometry question. And it'll go through the process. So it's identified you need to use trigonometry. And it knows it can create a right angled triangle. So now we're looking at the angle and the adjacent side. So it's using the tan formula. I think last time it actually used, found the hypotenuse with cos and then um, yeah, used a couple of formulas to do it. But this time it's improved. So it's it's gotten the height of the lighthouse. And I've been using this chatbot just to look at some of the typical textbook questions that get asked. So here one's a probability question that at least two students are girls in what is selected here. So a class contains 10 boys, 15 girls, teacher randomly sex 25. And then what's the probability that no girls are chosen? Can do differentiation. Uh, can do factorizing trinomials. Can find the equation of a line passing through two points. Can use algebra to work out the cost of you know, two items that add to 150 where one's $100 more than another. And I was playing a game of guess the number with it. So all of these typical textbook problems, and I would dare say 99% of problems in the textbook, if you typed them in to this chatbot, it could solve it almost immediately. And so we need to think about what we're doing, the sorts of problems that we're giving our kids, because are they going to be redundant in the future or are they going to help our students thrive? And I would argue that most of them will be completely redundant. After witnessing the huge range of questions the AI could solve, I thought I'd give it one of my upper primary or lower secondary puzzles. And all you've got to do is place the numbers one to nine in the grid below and satisfy each of those clues. So this is how it went. So I've asked them to try solve a puzzle, gave them the clues, and then they've gone through using clues one by one, tried to allocate numbers to the grid. Now, this isn't really how the puzzles work. You kind of need to use clues in a complementary manner. So one clue might not reveal all the information, but it'll reveal part and you need to combine that with a second clue. And because it tried it sequentially, it would get there, try and answer, and then I would give it some feedback. You know, this in this case, the one is not surrounded by prime numbers, which was something that they hadn't satisfied. So they tried again, then I'd give them a prompt again. Clue three hasn't been satisfied. And on and on it went. And I realized the reason that the chatbot couldn't solve this problem is because it couldn't prioritize information and it couldn't combine pieces of information to come up with something new. So it goes on and on and on and on and it didn't even get close. So now I'm gonna teach you how to make these puzzles and hopefully you can see why they're so important. To create these puzzles, you first need to allocate the numbers one to nine randomly in a three by three grid. The second step is to determine who this puzzle is for. So what sort of mathematical language do you want them to develop and use in a context where they're solving a problem? Because mathematical language taught, you know, on a whiteboard, this is the definition of this, is pretty much meaningless. You need to use language in a context and you need to repeat it again and again. And I always think of my daughter's learning manners. I never sit them down in front of a whiteboard. Oh, today we're gonna to learn manners, girls. No, I, I always, with a situation in a context, I say, oh, you know, here's a meal. Thank you. Uh, here's a present. Thank you. Um, can I please have this? Whatever it is, it's always done within a context and it's always repeated. I've done it probably a thousand times now and it still doesn't always happen. So repetition within a context um, and appropriate to the year level you're designing that puzzle for. So if I was designing this puzzle for first grade kids, I might say things like uh, the smallest number is in the top left corner. So that's language that's appropriate to their year level. Smallest 
and top left, the directional sense and sort of higher, lower. Um, you might even throw in some even and odd things in there. And so that clue is not complex for a few reasons. One, the language is pretty basic. And then two, each clue gives away the location of one number. Whereas when you get a bit more complex and when you create better puzzles, the, the clues will integrate with one another and you'll need to have multiple clues pieced together to place one number. So for example, if I was making something for grade three and fours, you might recognize here that all the multiples of three are in the middle column. And it's just a good process of noticing too for you as a teacher what, what's true. You know, there's prime in the corner, there's this, there's square numbers here. So all the multiples of three are in the middle column doesn't actually give us the location of anything. It tells us that three things are here, three, six, and nine, but we don't actually know the order yet. And so you might have to combine that with another clue that says, you know, a square number is in the top row or the highest number is in the top row. And then that would give away the location of the nine. But each clue alone won't give you anything. And so uh, as you get better at noticing, you can uh, decide, you know, what, what language is appropriate. You might use um, factors. You might use something about prime, composite. Uh, you might use there's any number of mathematical terms that you can throw in there. And the beauty of it is that they're interleaved there's different content weaved within the same puzzle. And I think that's really important. Sometimes we teach content as a standalone thing. All right, now we're doing area. And, you know, saying that that basically has nothing to do with multiplication or number sense, but they're all intertwined. Maths is all intertwined. And so we should kind of teach it in that way. And I think kids retain it better when you do it like that as well. So um, if you would like, there are some three by three and four by four puzzles on the game suite, games.thinksquare.com.au. You can click on Sudoku there and there's a number that you can play for free. If you want hundreds of them, then subscribe to the Game Suite for a couple of bucks per student. You get access to that and a whole range of other mathemat mathematical intentional fun games. And if you'd like to download a couple of hard copies, I've got a 4x4, four four, so numbers 1 to 16, super tricky. Probably take you half an hour to an hour to solve it. it took me about two hours to write. And, um, and there's a 3x3s three, three three as well included in that set. So even though these are time intense to make, I think the process of making them as a teacher is really important because you're going through, you know, thinking about what are my kids going to be thinking about? How are they going to apply their knowledge to solve a novel problem? And these are novel problems. They're ones that AI can't solve yet. And I think that's why they're so important for our students to um, do things like that. So if you're looking for a textbook full of novel problems and hundreds and hundreds of puzzles like this, the MathMate Year 7 and 8 textbooks are available. Check out mathsmate.net slash textbooks. Enjoy the activity.